Hello, hello, and welcome to a guide on how to defeat every vault in Vault Hunters 118, version 7.7. First off, we should go over how many vaults there are and what they are. There happen to be four vaults. The Monolith Run, the Hunt the Guardians, the Scavenger, and the Find the Cakes. Monolith Runs can only be found randomly on crystals and are most often found before level 10. However, you can get them after level 10, it's just quite rare. Hunt the Guardian runs or Obelisk runs can be found randomly on crystals, most often after level 10, or you can force them by making a seal of the Executioner and combining it with your crystal in an anvil. Similarly, Scavenger runs can be found randomly on crystals, most often after level 10, or once again forced on a crystal by the use of a seal of the Hunter. And Cake Vaults are quite special, they cannot be found randomly, you must make a seal of the Confectioner and combine it with your crystal. In a monolith run, the goal is to run around the vault and right-click all of your monoliths to light them. In an obelisk run, you need to run around your vault, find your obelisks, and right-click them just like a monolith vault. However, there's an added challenge for when you right-click an obelisk, groups of vault guardians will spawn and you'll have to defeat them. In scavenger runs, you need to find certain items inside of certain chests and defeat mobs for mob essence possibly. And once you get all of your scavenger items, just like a scavenger hunt, you turn them in at these cute green scavenger altars. In cake vaults, you need to find all the cakes, and uh, they're hidden randomly throughout each room in the vault. You unlock the next room by finding a cake, and you'll know where they are because a pretty pink hue overcomes your screen. Before getting into the nitty gritty of everything, I should say the absolute number one tip that I can recommend to anyone looking to complete vaults is a choice flask for hunter. Have a high level of hunter and drink a choice flask of hunter before entering a vault and you are golden. Hunter is an ability that highlights chests initially around you uh, on a cooldown of 120 seconds. However, you can set it to look for vault objectives. A vault objective is a monolith, an obelisk, or a scavenger altar, including any of the god altars. You can also set it to target wooden chests, gilded chests, living chests, ornate chests, or coins. Drinking a flask of hunter before you're entering into a vault will still allow you to select any of the specializations. So if you find a monolith or an obelisk vault, you can specialize observer to look for these specifically. Or if you find a scavenger vault, you can specialize in a chest that you need a specific item from. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to invest all 16 skill points needed to max out Hunter, but you can see as the cooldown goes down, you don't need a maximum Hunter to be proficient in completing vaults. It'll just make it take a little longer. For our first vault, the Find the Monolith vault, I'm actually going to show off in creative mode. Since there's not much necessarily skill that comes into it, it's just exploration. You can see at the top of the screen, you have the goal, find the monoliths, and how many monoliths. Now we get super lucky. We roll the minimum amount of monoliths, which is two. But you can roll anywhere up to six, I believe is the maximum, um, which can be quite difficult. So the best tip that I can give, if you have a high level of hunter, make sure to drink your flask and specialize in observer. Monoliths show up in observer. Ah, here's a perfectly lucky monolith to test us out on. Now you can see this monolith spawned really, really visible. You wouldn't need to use Hunter, but should you use Hunter, you'll see it erupts into a beautiful green sparkle that you can see through blocks. That up there is most likely an altar because there can only be one vault objective in a single room. So you can see how it highlights altars as well as monoliths. And make sure to right click your monolith to light it. Do note that monoliths can only spawn in common rooms. They're not going to spawn in challenge rooms or omega rooms. Now, if you don't have hunter to search for your monoliths, that's okay. Or if your hunter is a very low level and the cooldown is very high, you can still search for them normal. The best way for you to search for monoliths is to just run around the room. They have a small particle effect attached to them, as you saw, a little smoke stack effect. But for the most part, monoliths can spawn anywhere in a common room. So your best bet is to check the top, check the bottom, check the middle, and keep on going. If a room is too large, or you think it might be a waste of time to try to explore it, then skip it. You don't want to spend minutes in a room only to find that there isn't a monolith. Check it out. Another lucky monolith. Oop. Perfect. So you can see the vault does not end once you've lit your monolith. In fact, it says find the exit. 
Unlike the other vaults of Vault Hunters, the Monolith Vault does not end when you light all of your monoliths. You need to find your way back out of the vault to actually complete it. And there are a few ways that you can ensure you know how to navigate your vault. If you have the Vault Compass mod unlocked, that's pretty easy. You're just going to have that in your hotbar and it'll point you right to the exit. However, if you don't, bring in some sort of noticeable block. I like to use green wool in my survival world. And all you have to do is mark right here the entrance to the next room. That'll let you know that you've been through that room and you need to backtrack through it. In addition, have a consistent route. The route that I like to follow is to go straight out from the first portal room, travel all the way down until you hit the end, marking as you go, and upon hitting the final room, face the way you came, turn to the right. If there's an open hallway there, enter it, or you have to go one room back if it's like a triangle vault or a star vault, and then enter into this right hallway. So you know that you are one right from the main track. Now you're going to head towards the portal, straight towards it, and just explore this line of the vault. You'll know when you're next to the portal room because your left-hand hallway will be replaced with vault bedrock. Like so. Now I know that I'm next to the hallway. If I continue one room further, I am now behind the portal room. And if I go one room back and one room to my right, like so, we are now standing in front of our portal room. And we'll know which one it is because we have marked it with the green wool. And then we are home free, travel through the portal, and you can see we have our monolith crate. Now for our next three vaults, I am going to show these off in survival since they require a little more tact and skill than simply running around the vault looking for monoliths. Welcome to my survival let's play world. Let's hunt the guardians. Remember, to force a hunt the guardians, you need to make a seal of the executioner. Then take your crafted crystal and combine it with the seal in an anvil for eight levels. You can see it forces the layout of polygon as well. That just determines the shape of the vault. It doesn't have a whole lot of sway over how you run it. Now, some considerations is I am level 54. I have a maxed out hunter, and I also have some levels in rampage. Rampage is an ability that consumes an amount of mana per second and increases your damage. I use this to defeat the guardians. Other abilities that would be useful against the guardians are mana shield which consumes an amount of mana per second and absorbs an amount of damage, a percentage of damage. Nova can be quite powerful as it spreads your damage in a radius around you, or it can freeze mobs around you, or it can poison mobs around you. But for the purposes of Guardians, I'd say Nova as they tend to group up. I also have an Eternal that I can summon to help me fight. Now, since I know we're doing a Hunt the Guardians, I already know what I want to be specced into when it comes to Hunter, and that would be Observer, since that is going to give me the best bet of finding all the obelisks. As far as Vault Gear goes, I would recommend bringing in a shield, since some of the Guardians have thorns, and make sure you have some pretty good weapons to fight them with. I would also highly recommend an Infinite Water Bucket. Okay, this is a pretty lucky obelisk run. Only three obelisks, which is the minimum, uh, six being the maximum. You can see there are also numbers underneath the obelisks. All of them are zero out of some number. Zero out of seven, zero out of four, zero out of eight. Those are the amount of guardians I'm going to have to fight in order of the obelisks I light. So the first obelisk will spawn seven, the second will spawn four, the third will spawn eight, and I have to defeat all the guardians for that obelisk to count. To find the obelisks, just run through the vault and pop your hunter or check the whole room as best you can. Obelisks can be quite easy to spot because they have a large particle effect that hangs above them. Ah, looks like our first room is a challenge room. Now, that's a great time to show off that obelisks and other vault objectives cannot spawn in challenge rooms or omega rooms. They must spawn in a common room. Ah, check that out. I didn't even have to use my hunter to spot this first obelisk. It's visible already because of its particle effect. Obelisks spawn much more common than monoliths do, so it's not very hard to defeat these even without the hunter ability. You can see I'm flooding my area with water. That's because I like to use a fairly cheap strat. 
by spamming an infinite water bucket all around me, the guardians are not that good at swimming. So it helps your survivability. Because I'm up on this ledge though, most of the guardians are probably gonna flow down there. Since I have the ability, I'm first gonna activate my rampage to get my damage up, and then I will summon in the guardians. You'll see there are two types of guardians. These are arbalists, the one that are shooting me with crossbows. They do quite a bit of damage for a ranged monster, but don't have a lot of health. These are also the axe ones. I believe they're called brutes. Uh, the brutes are quite dangerous to take damage in person, so if you take a melee shot from them, you're not going to be happy. However, they don't have any range to them. But you can see right there, they have a thorns effect, which I'll try to proc by punching. Ah, unfortunately he was too close to being dead. Always remember to turn off your rampage and or mana shield and move on to the next obelisk. Aha! Another obelisk we didn't even have to use Hunter for. That is very convenient. Now in the last fight, you saw some other monsters got involved. So it's best that you clear the area around your obelisk, or at least the area that you'll be fighting in, as best you can before engaging in the guardians. You don't want any nasty drowned or skeletons to crash your party. Now I'll use this obelisk to show that you can absolutely do these fights without cheesing it. It's just a little scarier. Of course it helps that I have a very high damage solo weapon, so I can take them down one by one. You'll notice the Arbalists don't seem to do ranged attacks when you get close to them and are hitting them. They pull out a little stick and they'll smack you with it. Aha! Hunter helped out a little bit with that one, but you can see that particle effect goes really high up. Now this last one has eight guardians in it, but I still want to show off that it is possible to do it without cheesing. And this is actually a decent room to do it in. You can see there's a lot of pillars, there's a lot of things to hide behind. I have a decent heal, and I can summon in my mini-me, or my eternal. Um, but just in case, I always have the crutch of a nice water bucket. Definitely going to want to put on a rampage for this one. Here we go. My suggestion is always to take out the Arbalists first, as they can deal range damage, which is very scary. They like to group up, so having weapons with chaining or cleave range is going to be very helpful in defeating them. And as you can hear, the shield is saving me from a lot of shots. There's definitely a lot to think about sometimes. It can be a little panicking, but just make sure your mind stays clear and you remember that with good enough gear, anything is possible and you will complete the vault. You can see as well, this vault kicks you out. At the bottom of my screen, it says teleporting back and a little countdown. Once you kill the last guardian, you will be kicked out of the vault and be given an amount of XP and your boss crate. Remember for scavenger vaults, you're going to want a seal of the hunter if you want to force it, or you could try to randomly roll it. And remember, you always want to drink a choice flask before entering into a scavenger vault and do not select your specialization. You never know what you're going to need in a scavenger vault and having an open hunter specialization is meant to help you in the final few minutes of the vault find those last few items. In addition, I have a little helper. I have a pouch set up, keyed to every single scavenger item with a pickup upgrade. That means that if I drop the item on the ground, or if a monster drops it or coin pile drops it, it'll get sucked into this pouch. You can see I've even organized them. We have our mob drops here, our coin drops here, our wooden chest drops here, our gilded drops here, although this guy seems to have been messed up a little bit. We have our ornate drops here, and we have our living drops here. And once again, these two guys seem to have gotten screwed up, but you get the point. This is very helpful, and it keeps your inventory clear and gives you a very easy way to check what scavenger items you have. Now, although scavenger vaults do kick you out when you complete them, some scavenger vaults can be quite impossible to finish. So make sure you either have a vault compass to help you get out or mark your path so you know how to leave. Oh, a very, very lucky scavenger vault, except for the unfortunate wild and frail modifiers, but that's neither here nor there. Now, ripped pages, green mob essence, and empty jars. Ripped pages come from wooden chests, you can see because of a little wooden icon, and they are a common item. Green mob essence is dropped by mobs, and although that looks like zombies and skeletons, every mob essence has that icon. Green mob essence comes from the basic mobs, so in another theme, basic mobs are the regular piglins, as well as, I believe, the little dogs that spawn the annoying ones. 
There is also purple mob essence, which comes from vault fighters exclusively, and black mob essence, which comes from the difficult mobs, like skeletons, wither skeletons, blazes, strays, any of those caliber spiders as well. Empty jar is from ornate chests, and lucky for us, it's another common item. We only have three items to find, though you could have more, I think up to six. And I have up to 30 of the green mob essence and the ripped pages. Remember, I'm level 54, which influences the amount of items I need to find. If you're a much lower level, you will not need to find 30. Now for this vault, I'm actually going to instantly specialize in ornate, because I know I can find wooden chests everywhere. Wooden chests are always the least priority if you have ripped pages. You can see wooden chests here, wooden chests there, wooden chests are everywhere. However, I don't even see ornates in this room. And my biggest tip for scavenger vaults is to stay focused. Look for what you need. Loot what you need. Kill what you need. If you don't need wooden chests, avoid the wooden chests. They're only going to slow you down. Ah, we have some ornates over there. Let's hope we get some empty jars. Aha! We have one of our empty jars, which as I toss out, will go right into my little pouch. And you can see we have one of four of our empty jars. Not so much luck on the empty jars in our next chest, but we do get a helmet. Though that doesn't help a scavenger. I'll also show off here that, ah, mob trap. Perhaps we find a nice ripped page. No such luck. It is good to note that there is no guarantee that you find a scavenger item. Although in this one, we seem to have found the uh, Omega from wooden chests. That is the spider spool. Ah, and an Omega chest. Once again, no scavenger item. Here we are, our first ripped page. They just spawn in chests like normal. Now, if this was not such an easy scavenger, and there are many, many chests and many different items, I would wait to specialize my hunter until about 10 minutes left in the vault, in which I would specialize in what I think I'm going to struggle to find the most of for the rest of the vault. So if you still have rare or omega items left, which, by the way, you can tell by the color, blue being common, yellow being rare, pink being epic, and green being omega, if you have any high rarity items and you're not sure if you're going to be able to find them, I would specialize in that. And keep in mind that not every scavenger vault is going to be possible. Some of them are just going to have too many chests or too many high rarity items. Uh, sometimes you just roll really bad luck. I'm sure you've been seeing these little green particle effects all throughout, and they actually show up on the minimap as you can see as a bright green dot. These are the turn in altars. It's where you put your scavenger items when you have all of them. Now, you don't have to put all of them in at once. You can actually feed it the items even if you don't have enough of it to complete. But I always recommend waiting until the very end of the vault to feed this thing. Because scavenger items, as you can see, have pretty high soul values, some of them. And you're going to want to put those in a soul diffuser when you get back home if you either don't need them or are unable to complete the vault. A scavenger altar will never accept items that are not in the scavenger vault's list. So even if it's a scavenger item, if you don't need it, you can't put it in. Oh, I think I just got my first green mob essence from that piglin. I'll show it off right there. Very nice. Aha, our very last jar. There we go. Four jars. So now my focus is going to be wooden chests and finding all of the ripped pages we need while killing as many of the piglins as I can. Now, mob essences usually just come passively as you fight the monsters in order to get the chests. Another tip is I often skip these rooms, as they're very time-consuming to go through, unless there's like an immediately accessible or visible POI for something you need. Dungeons like this one can be extremely helpful, especially if you can break chests like this to loot it super quick. Oh, there's my last rip page. Now I just have to hunt mobs. Oh, now this is perfect. This room spawns a ton of monsters in it, uh, especially a lot of zombies, which do drop green mob essence. Even if they're not a part of the vault theme you're on, they'll still drop the appropriate mob essence. Now, even though this was a very easy scavenger, it came down pretty close for me, and I actually missed out recording putting in the green mob essence, or at least the green mob essence that I'd had, as I took too long to find one of the turn-in altars. Very dangerous if you do. You can see there's a little animation when you input your item, so make sure you have enough time. I brought in these sweet kiwis, which adds 10 seconds to your vault timer for removing your maximum health. You can see my hearts have been reduced below the normal amount because I had to eat a few to not die to the timer. So even the easy scavengers can still get you, but as you can see, 
we've completed our vault, and we have our scavenger crate. Alrighty, for our last tad to complete is one of the harder ones, and oops, that would be the cake vault. You can see cake vaults actually exhaust themselves when you create them, that's because you're not meant to add any modifiers. Now, cake vaults aren't necessarily geared towards completion, so I might not be able to complete this. Alrighty, so when you enter into a cake vault, you're going to enter into a blanked out room, or rather just the regular room with a blanked out wall, and a cake in the center, and a big pink hue. This pink hue tells you how close you are to the cake. The brighter the hue, the closer you are to the cake. You can see when you click a cake, you get uh, always two anger, and then you might get sweet, or you might get cherry, or you might get... Oh, uh, what's the other one? I don't remember, but basically the, the vault is going to build mob damage as well as building item rarity and item quantity. Your goal is to literally just run through, check for that pink hue on your screen, and my recommendation is to do just that. If you want to complete the vault, your goal is to run as fast as you can, like the gingerbread man, uh, and find some cakes. Oh, here we are. We're getting a pink hue. It's probably up here since I already went downwards and didn't see any hue at all. Let's see, aha, here we go. You can also see at the top of my screen, uh, it is not telling me how many cakes I have left. That's because it's meant to be random. It's supposed to be a risk and reward. I would also recommend, even if you have a compass, mark your exits. Each cake you eat will unlock the next room and it will unlock it in a spiral fashion. You don't wanna go backwards because you're not gonna find a cake in that room again. Make sure to be careful. Each cake is a guaranteed 2% additional mob damage. You can see that's building up really fast already. We're already on 4% additional mob damage. Oh, that's a funny place for a cake. Now you can see right there, as I ate that cake, the little cake at the top of my screen filled in a little bit. That is your indicator as how many cakes you have. You can kind of guesstimate by the progress bar of your cakes how many you may have left in the vault. The range is from 20 cakes all the way to 60. Admittedly, the best way to know how many cakes you have is once your cake is filled to the halfway mark. Ah, keep in mind that cakes can spawn pretty much anywhere, so annoyingly under a bridge is unfortunately a valid spawning space for a cake. Cakes can even spawn inside of dungeons, so if you're having trouble finding a cake, perhaps Check around for dungeons either on your minimap or by digging around. And don't worry too much about breaking a cake. Even if you break a cake by mining the block out from under it, it will respawn somewhere else in the room pretty immediately. But you'll notice your aura kind of instantly goes away if you break a cake. Another great thing to have if you have the ability to get them is a speed idol, like I do. A uh, speed idol is awesome. It also even comes with a little bit of cooldown resistance or a cooldown reduction, which allows me to dash a bit more frequently. Ooh, and an easy cake. Gotta love those. Now, I mentioned before that not all cake vaults are meant to be completed, and that's actually by design. Um, because you can see we're building all this item quantity and item rarity, which you can note by the uh, the treasure chest is 1%. Each treasure chest is 1% quantity. Each lucky clover is 1% item rarity. These vaults are mostly meant for looting, but there is a special reward for completing them. Each time you complete them, you do get a piece of the cake armor set. You can see I'm actually wearing three pieces, but not the pants. I'm in it for the pants. Looks like we've reached about halfway on the cake at 21. So we definitely rolled pretty high here. I can assume this vault is going to have 42 cakes. Now, this is where, if you're looking to complete, you need to make the executive decision. Do you continue the cake vault? Uh, normally, I would actually stop my cake vault here, considering we have 44% additional mob damage and a ton of rarity and a ton of quantity. This is probably better off being looted, but since I'm showing off completing the cake vault, I am gonna go for it. Now, of course, that does run the risk of dying, which would definitely be sad, especially on my survival world so hopefully we continue to find cakes at the same rate we're a little over halfway on my vault time so we're on a good pace but that pace needs to continue optimal movement in cake vaults really does boil down to just running around almost in circles uh, you're not looking for anything unless you're here to loot if you're here to not complete then obviously you're not well you're here to complete the cake vault if you're watching this video so run around 
you want to catch the cake in your little cake aura as fast as possible. Once you catch it in the aura, then you can be specific, testing if it's above you, if it's below you, what direction makes it go more. You see here, it seems that it is not above me, at least not in this direction. Ah, but it was above me in this direction. And that's what mostly cake vaults are all about, is just sort of testing the water, figuring out where the cake is after catching it in your aura. Oh, perfect. Here's a great way to show off that cakes, unlike the other vault objectives, can spawn in challenge rooms. Cake vaults can still spawn challenge rooms and omega rooms, and unlike the monoliths, obelisks, and, um, what is it, scavenger altars, cakes can and will and have to spawn in those specialty rooms when they appear in the vault. Of course, when you get rooms like the Wild West room, sometimes that spells dismay, for your cake might be on top of a dangerous house, or worse, inside of it. So be very careful when dealing with cakes in challenge rooms, or of course, you know, like there, the cake might just be on the floor and you might be overthinking things. So another tip for a cake vault is keep it simple, stay calm. Cake vaults are fun. They're relaxing in a way. If you have enough speed by investing your points into speed or having a speed idle, you can mostly just run around the vault looking for that pretty pink hue. Well, would you look at that? 41 cakes. According to our estimation, and really according to how it looks, this next cake will be our last. But we still have seven and a half minutes left, and check it out. It's an easy one. So... If I wanted to risk the 82% additional mob damage, well, I think I will a little bit just to show how lucrative these cake vaults can be. Let's take a look at what our chest hauls look like. Ooh, that is uh, pretty bad, actually. There we go. That's more like it. That is the item quantity and item rarity doing its work. All right, I think at three minutes, I'm going to call it good here. And usually I would say to do that if you didn't know where the cake was, but... We got some pretty high damage, yeah. Definitely 42 cakes is quite a bit, and just in case, you never know if it's the last one, but to be fair, it's usually pretty obvious. Now, cake vaults really are a great way for actually farming XP, because you get a pretty decent amount for completing them, and they don't require much skill or uh, specific builds, the only upfront cost being you'll need some decent amount of speed, and you can see 9,000 experience for doing that. And that had 42 cakes in it, and I was able to complete that with 7 minutes on the clock. Alright, now you know how to complete every vault in Vault Hunters 118 as of 7.7. .7. There will be more in the future, but for now we've got our monoliths, our obelisks, our scavengers, and our cakes. Remember, for monoliths, it's mostly just exploration. Make sure you're exploring top, down, center, and skip big rooms that are going to be a waste of time. Obelisks are pretty easy. You don't even really need the hunter if you have it, as they have a big particle effect and are very common. Just make sure you've got good enough gear or an infinite water bucket to defeat the guardians. Scavenger vaults are probably the hardest of the four, so make sure you have your hunter flask specialization. You know, drink that before entering the vault and pick the specialization when you see something you're going to really need a lot of or near the end of the vault if you're struggling to find something. And of course, for cakes, just make sure to stay focused, keep looking for cakes, run around the center of the room, try to pick up an aura, test if it's above you, test if it's below you, and you'll find your cakes in no time. And of course, the best tip I can give for all the vaults is to stay focused. If you're specifically just trying to complete it, focus on completing it. You'll do it in absolutely no time. Well, thanks for watching, and thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope it was informative, and I hope you can take something away from this that'll help you grind those crates, artifacts, and XP in Vault Hunters. If you liked the video, please drop a subscribe. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of March, and if you guys are willing to help, I think we're going to be able to do it. So, go on in, join the awesome community. We do Let's Play content most every day. Sometimes it'll be informative content like this. But yeah, come check it out. It's a, it's a pretty awesome space in the DJojo the Awesome Space. It's even, it's in the name. So yeah, see you in the next one.